Our schools are, in a sense, factories in which the raw materials are to be shaped and fashioned into products to meet the various demands of life. The specifications for manufacturing come from the demands of 20th century civilization, and it is the business of the school to build its pupils to the specifications laid down. Elward Coverley, Public School Administration, 1916, quoted in School as a Factory by Alan Sakula, 1980. The students' movement in California and around the world is a real opening for radical politics. It raises basic questions about what society has become and where it is going. I'm a long-term critic of neoliberalism. I am convinced that this form of capitalism is totally unsustainable and unlivable, since, however, it is squarely installed in the realms of knowledge, culture, and information. Since it is cognitive capitalism, it seems that there is no more strategic point for opposition than the universities. This doesn't mean that every point of opposition is not important, just that this one could become crucial if enough people would raise the basic questions of value. What's society good for? How am I participating? Which consequences does that have on others, etc.? Those kinds of questions form the basis of the practical philosophy that interests me. That's Brian Holmes in an interview by Michael Wilson. A, the struggle for public education is a struggle against privatization throughout the economy, against the exclusions of the marketplace, and finally an against, against an economy based on private resources. B, the defense of staff and adjunct teachers is part of a program against the precarization of workers' lives in every sector. C, this, the student is not a privileged case, but a true subject of the market and its credit fuels credit-fueled plunderings of the future, witness the recent revelations about the scope of student debt. And the fight against capitalism will necessarily happen on campuses, among other places. Uh, that's Joshua Clover. A school is a factory, a poem, is a prison, is academia, is boredom, with flashes of panic. <laughs> and that's Joseph, Joseph Brodsky. <laughs> I'd like to dedicate my time today to reflecting on my engagement both individually and collectively with the struggles around the meaning of public education over the last year. And in doing so, I hope to consider what I see as unresolved tensions within this struggle that are both productive and debilitating. And those are, in part, the tensions around symbolic action and modes of engagement. The tensions that surround the meaning of public education when what constitutes the public is itself a contested term full of the sorts of antagonisms that animate collective fictions. By focusing on the arc of my own involvement in the struggle, I hope not to engage in a kind of narcissistic blow-by-blow -blow of the last year, but rather to re-examine my experiences in light of questions that faced and still face those of us who seek to link the struggles around public education with a broad social, political, and economic climate, and the ways that the university administration manages various forms of resistance to privatization. I warn you in advance that some listeners may find a certain naivete and redundancy in what follows, but what I would like to say without a, a hint of anti-intellectualism is that I'm looking to further avoid, to avoid further mystification without oversimplifying the complexity of our pre predicament. I should also say, by way of introduction, something about my format. When I proposed this talk, I was under investigation by labor relations at UC Riverside for my involvement uh, with the website which, which announced Mark Udoff's resignation last March. <laughs> I structured this presentation, I hope, in, a, in an open-ended way so that, I, so that we might have a conversation to really use the experiences and questions that I present as a starting point. I don't want to preach to the choir here, and I do think that we have difficult questions that we have to ask difficult questions of ourselves so that as the administration puts the final touches on dismantling the UC system as we know it, this conference not does, does not become or continue to be about hand-wringing, hamstrung by hand-wringing or patting ourselves on the back. The question is not only what to do now, but also how we move from protest to action, from managed reactionary politics towards spaces of potential. On September 24th, I forgot you were doing that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> On September 24th last year, after making a number of protest signs and teaching an abridged version of my web-based art class at UCI, UCR, I encouraged my class to attend the rally together. 
which was just beginning to form outside of the art building. I had already spent a large portion of the class explaining the so-called crisis as I understood it then, the logic of the walkout, and what I made, and I made what I thought was a rational appeal to my students, namely that the interests of staff, faculty, and students were being undermined in the name of austerity and efficiency. This logic, I explained, could only be countered by a large demonstration, by a large demonstration of refusal. Most of my students wandered off sheepishly, sheepishly and the rally that organized with good intentions and a sense of commitment was poorly attended and felt more like a rehearsal than an event. Meanwhile, other campuses saw rallies attended by thousands in the building occupations that have given this struggle, such as it is, its real meaning and charge. One of the questions I faced was to how to activate meaningful struggle on a campus that seems, and still seems, almost oblivious to the gravity of the present day dynamics of the university. Between that September day and the Regents meeting at UCLA in November was a crucial germination period in terms of my thinking and I think many people's thinking about the stakes of this struggle. A teaching in Berkeley, which you can still see on, online, set out very clearly uh, that in fact everything was and is at stake. Wendy Brown, the political scientist in particular suggested that the legacy of Prop 13, 30 years of right-wing propaganda, have ushered in a political moment in which we risk absolutely every aspect of human experience being reduced to equations of dollars and cents. And I probably don't need to tell all of you that we are fighting, to put it very bluntly, to stop the utter commodification of absolutely everything. It was a desire to overcome the stale habits of protest, retaining, of course, a spark of that oppositional spirit that led me to think about strategic ways to push the meaning of the struggle elsewhere or everywhere. Conversations and communication with Mark Herbst, Kara Baldwin, Jason Smith, Caleb Waldorf, Sean Dockre, Micah Cardenas, Michael Wilson, Brett Stahlbaum, Ricardo Dominguez, and others gave me the impetus and the inspiration to buy the domain name Mark Udoff and begin thinking what to do, how best to use this and when, how, how best to intervene in and interfere with the impoverished symbolic logic and economy of the university, how best to target those who turn a crisis of priorities into a budget crisis, how to extend the logic and spirit of the building occupations, how to occupy everything, as we decided to put it. So I think most of you are familiar with the website. Um, uh, some of my favorite lines that I think people that draw on other texts that were written during this time, um, <clears throat> particularly the, the text, uh, the Necrosocial, uh, which had to do with social death. Um, it's clear to me now that we must all do our part to avoid social death. Um, and uh, also, I think you probably followed <laughs> Mark Udoff's Twitter, imposter website claimed I resigned nonsense, so on. And then, interestingly, the way that this uh, was reflected in the, in the press. Um, so the thing that surprised me most about the, mar the morning of March 3rd, when Udoff's resignation site was made public, was the speed with which events unfolded. Uh, threads began to circulate on discussion boards. This is a gag, right? Probably would be a good idea to hold the jokes for a while. Too many jokers around who don't know when something is not funny from UCSD, and I, I think referencing uh, the, the racist actions here on campus, which I thought was very odd to, to link uh, this project to uh, projects like that, or actions like that. Uh, another comment, this is funny, I've decided to go back to school to study the history of social movements, as if. Uh, is this a joke? I feel like I'm in the twilight zone. Is it April 1st? Read it more closely and see links to occupy everything, destroy capitalism and the like. Well done, authors, you had me going. If only this was true, and in this hyper-reality, who knows, who knows? It was only a couple...